Okay, so um, this will be a, present a joint presentation with uh, Jacques Maurice. And so uh, I will start uh, myself. And uh, it's basically uh, three part uh, presentations. Um, and so first uh, we'll, uh, so basically it's uh, what's new and uh, what's, uh, what's work in progress uh, this year, basically. And so uh, there are three uh, main things. So the first thing is that we can now solve uh, Maxwell equations uh, with the boundary element method. And so uh, for this first part, I will first uh, very briefly introduce what is the boundary element method, if you don't know uh, what it is. And then uh, I will uh, give the floor to Jacques and uh, he will uh, go, go on to uh, introduce uh, how to solve Maxwell's equation now in 3FM with the boundary element method. In the second part, uh, we'll uh, introduce uh, what we call the composite uh, finite element spaces, which is basically uh, now a new uh, framework of finite element spaces uh, that can have uh, uh, many components which can uh, live on uh, different meshes and even on different mesh types. And so this will uh, basically enrich the capabilities of uh, FreeFem to define more general coupled variational formulations. Uh, with variables that don't live in the in the same meshes and so on, as uh, Frederic uh, introduced at the end of its uh, presentation. And so uh, then this will be introduced uh, and illustrated uh, through a few examples that uh, Jacques will uh, present. And uh, then the the final part will be about uh, what's new uh, uh, in order to facilitate the use of parallelism in FreeFem. So what we are working on to basically uh, hide more and more of the technicalities uh, so that uh, it is easier and easier for the user to go from uh, his sequential code to uh, parallel code. Okay, and so as I said, I will start with a quick recap on what is the boundary element method. So let's say I have my uh, model problem here. So it's not Maxwell, it's simple. It's a scalar problem, it's an animal problem. So I want to solve this uh, Elmholtz equation in basically, uh, this is a scattering problem. So we have an object here, uh, Omega, with boundary gamma. And I want to solve uh, a scattering problem in the exterior boundary, so in the infinite domain uh, R3 uh, uh, without Omega. And uh, so this is the constant coefficient Elmholtz equation. So my web number K here is constant. And let's say I have an incoming wave uh, U inc here. And so this is written in terms of uh, scattered field. So I have a directly boundary condition of gamma, which says scattered field equals minus uh, my incoming uh, known field here. So this is a directly boundary condition. And I have uh, so-called uh, Sommerfeld radiation conditions at infinity, which basically says uh, at infinity, we have only outgoing waves and no incoming wave. And so um, the idea of the boundary element method is if I have a constant coefficient equation here, I will be able to, instead of trying to solve uh, a problem on an infinite domain, which uh, as you may know is uh, pretty difficult, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of that, I will try to reformulate the problem and uh, seek an unknown on, only on the boundary of my uh, obstacle here, gamma. And so uh, in order to do that, we'll, uh, I need to introduce a single layer potential here, uh, which basically uh, makes use of the green kernel of your PDT. So this is for Elmer's equation. Uh, this is the green kernel for the Elmer's equation. And basically, the single layer potential here um, takes uh, as input a function basically which lives on the, the boundary gamma here. And uh, if you apply it, uh, if you apply uh, the single layer potential, it will basically produce for each x uh, of the, uh, in, the, uh, in the exterior of uh, omega solutions of the Helmholtz equation, which satisfy the uh, Sommerfeld uh, boundary condition at infinity. Uh, and so now uh, the idea is find the correct q. Uh, now I know that for any q, uh, this curve. It produces a solution of uh, my uh, n minus equation. I know that satisfies the Merkel condition. Now I need to find the Q that satisfies my directly boundary condition at gamma. Uh, and so basically, uh, this is written here. So I look for P, 
said that uh, the single layer uh, potential applied to P uh, equals U, my solution, at any point, uh, in particular, with uh, the directed modeling condition U equals minus U in on gamma. And so uh, the idea is that this equality, the directed boundary condition, I will uh, apply it basically variationally, so in a weak form. So I will um, I will multiply here by test function uh, Q, and I will integrate over gamma. And uh, this yields uh, this problem. So on the right hand side, you see uh, I just uh, multiply by Q and integrate on gamma. So I have this, this is my right hand side. And on the left hand side, I do the same, integral of u, q on gamma. And I replace u by its uh, form, uh, formulation in terms of the uh, single layer potential, SL of p. And so I have uh, basically SL of p integral on gamma of integral on gamma <coughs> of uh, the green kernel x minus uh, y, p of y, q of x. And so now I have, uh, so this is my rational, uh, BEM rational formulation. So you see now I need to solve for P here. And so uh, if I solve uh, this problem and find my P, uh, I will then uh, be able to reconstruct U from P uh, anywhere in, the, in my uh, 3D uh, space by applying the single potential uh, to P. Uh, so basically applying this formula to P. Uh, and I will recover uh, U anywhere. So basically now I know that in order to solve my problem, I just need to find the P that solves this problem. So basically uh, you see that I sort of gained one dimension, right? So now the problem is only posed on gamma. And uh, uh, now what, uh, what's, the, what's the difficulty here? What's the trick? So basically you see that uh, now I have double integral on gamma here. And I have sort of a complex function uh, with exponentials to evaluate here. So basically, once we discretize uh, the rational formulation, for example, using P1, uh, P1 uh, Lagrange uh, functions on gamma, well, uh, I will, uh, so first of all, the coefficients of the matrix here uh, are uh, not cheap to compute, they are very, uh, uh, are very expensive to compute because you have double integrals, you have a uh, sort of singularity here of the denominator when x is close to y, so you need to be careful with quadrature rules and so on. So this is the first difficulty. And the second difficulty is that, okay, the matrix is small because it's the size of gamma of the number of nodes of the boundary mesh, for example, but you see that uh, because of this uh, of interaction uh, because of the green kernel, which actually never vanishes, uh, the matrix will be full. So all the coefficients will be non-zero. So in contrast to FEM, the, I have a dense linear system to solve here, and this can obviously be uh, expensive. Uh, but this is basically what the boundary element method is. And so, uh, okay, so first, uh, as I said, the coefficients for the boundary element method are uh, complicated to compute. You need to be careful when you integrate uh, with the quadrature rules and so on. There are double integrals. And so, uh, Prefem is interfaced with the BEM tool library, which is a C library written by Xavier Kless, uh, which basically uh, efficiently computes all the coefficients of this uh, BEM matrix here. So, for various uh, scalar uh, equations, so Laplace, Picara, and Moltz. And now for uh, with Maxwell, uh, for Maxwell equations also. Uh, in 2D and 3D, we have P0, P1, P2, Lagrange, and uh, radiar Thomas elements for Maxwell. Okay, and Ben tool is the interface with FreeFem. Uh, okay, so now the second difficulty is, okay, the matrix is dense, and uh, obviously uh, when the size grows, you have a quadratic cost in storage and complexity uh, with this dense matrix. And so we try uh, to make use of the, the, basically the structure of the matrix to try to uh, compress the matrix and uh, make use of Laurent approximation to uh, basically uh, reduce the storage and computation of the BEM matrix. And so although BEM matrices do not have fast decreasing uh, singular values, 
Uh, thanks to the, uh, the structure of the green kernel and the properties of the green kernel, uh, we can basically uh, split the interactions in the matrix uh, between uh, two types of interactions. So near field interactions basically are interactions of, uh, between degrees of freedom that are cl uh, close to each other, uh, basically near the diagonal. So these are uh, basically not Laurent in nature. So it will be very difficult to compress, compress the, the blocks near the diagonal. But away from the diagonal, thanks to the green kernel, basically the, the blocks uh, away from the diagonal, which are so-called far field blocks, <laughs> are actually uh, Laurent in nature. And so we'll be able to uh, uh, approximate them well with uh, Laurent matrices. And so the idea is to build a hierarchical representation of the matrix in terms of blocks of uh, smaller and smaller sizes, and uh, basically identify, uh, identify uh, which blocks are compressible, basically which blocks uh, are far field blocks, and uh, make use of uh, long techniques, uh, approximation techniques, in order to uh, compress these blocks. And so for each uh, of these admissible blocks B, we'll be able to compute sort of an approximate truncated SVD, uh, for example, using a partially piloted adaptive cross approximation, which basically, uh, uh, for example, here, uh, computes an approximate uh, truncated SVD of trunk R, uh, we, which only needs uh, to compute two R uh, rows or columns instead of the whole block. So we don't even need the whole to know the whole block to compute a good Laurent approximation of the block. So this further reduces the complexity of uh, computing the uh, matrix coefficients. Uh, okay, and so basically we'll make use of uh, hierarchical matrices. In order to do that, this is a summary of uh, what, what, what is a hierarchical matrix. So first we, we start with our mesh. For example, here we have a surface mesh of uh, the Cobra cavity, uh, which is the S-shaped cavity. And we basically partition uh, and build the recursive clustering of these, de uh, of these uh, degrees of freedom corresponding to the vertices of the mesh, if you do P1, uh, so which basically group, right, recursively group uh, degrees of freedom in terms of clusters that, uh, of unknowns that are close to each other. And basically, the matrix, uh, the, the BEM matrix is the interactions between uh, such two clusters or such two patches. So we have the cluster tree for the unknowns and the cluster tree for the, the test functions, which are usually the same. It's a symmetric, uh, symmetric problem. And so uh, we will traverse the block tree recursively. And uh, so the third block is the whole block. You see it's not compressible. Uh, and uh, recursively, we traverse the block tree and uh, verify for each block uh, if, we, if it satisfies satisfy the so-called geometric admissibility condition. We basically say, OK, are the two clusters uh, corresponding to this block sufficiently far away uh, so that uh, this is a far field interaction? And so, Uh, so that we can actually use the rank approximation, approximation to compute a good approximation of uh, this block using uh, a low rank matrix. And so if yes, we compress the block using, for example, partial ACA. And this is what we got. This is the hierarchical matrix, which basically, uh, you can see in, actually near the diagonal, you have the red blocks here that uh, are near field blocks that we, that we don't compress because uh, They are not compressible, so they stay red. We need to compute them in full. But uh, the green blocks here correspond to long, uh, long approximation that we did for far field blocks. And so the number is the rank of the approximation. And the, the greener the block is, the more compressed it is. Uh, so this is what uh, we will use in FreeFem to uh, actually uh, uh, compute an approximation of, uh, BEM, of the dense BEM matrix. And so uh, this is the second library that is interfaced with FreeFem in order to do that. So this is a H tool, which is a C++ library uh, written by Pierre Marchand and myself. And so it interfaces with BEM tool to compute the coefficients uh, and actually build the H matrix corresponding to your, uh, your discretized versional BEM, BEM version. And this is also a parallel 
library, so which makes use of MPI and OpenMP to accelerate the computation and distribute the, the data between uh, computing cores. Okay, so now very quickly, how do to do all of this in free time? So we have, um, so first you need to define what type of uh, PDE you want to solve with the boundary element method. So basically this is for the scalar, uh, scalar K. So still this equation and depending on the value of K, you will solve Laplace and Mols or, or you have a problem. And then uh, there is a keyword here, BEM kernel here, which uh, is a new type of variable, which actually uh, says what type of uh, problem you want to solve with the boundary element method. And uh, you need to, to also specify which type of uh, band kernel you want to use. So, for example, for the simple example I just showed uh, before, it was a single layer operator that we needed to use. Okay, and now, uh, just after that, Jacques will talk about uh, Maxwell <coughs> and so vectorial band problem, uh, which makes use of uh, Ravier Thomas uh, space on surface meshes. Okay, so now that uh, we know how to define our BEM kernel, we, will, we can now define our BEM variational form. So this is the same thing more than BEM, so it's a variable. But now it is a double integral, right? So instead of into D, into D, X to D, uh, on your uh, surface mesh here. So for example, in 3D, I have 2D surface integrals, double integral on the surface mesh THS, and we use the BEM keyword uh, to, uh, to specify which kernel you want to use. Or you can also do it directly in the rational formation. Uh, obviously, you can also do it in 2D with a 1D curve integral over your uh, curve mesh THL. And uh, then you can actually discretize your rational problem uh, and build the H matrix here. So it's the same as in uh, FEM. Instead of matrix equals, you have H matrix equals because we are building. Not a sparse matrix, but a hierarchical matrix with H2. And you need to load the BEM plugin, which actually basically loads the BEM tool and H tool interface in order to use these libraries. Okay, and so now finally, I'll to solve the BEM problem. So here is my matrix. I will also build my right hand side as in, uh, as in, uh, basically, as in, uh, as, as what you do in FEM, because it's a sim simple integral. If you remember my simple example, so integral of my uh, incoming wave here, I build my right hand side, and I can solve the linear system with GMRS using the standard minus one uh, operator. And so now uh, I actually have so my uh, I have my, my BEM on side, so my BEM solution P on gamma, and now if I want to reconstruct my solution U of the Helmholtz equation in the volume anywhere. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the 3D space, can build an output mesh on which I want to compute my solution U, for example, here at square three. So this is the surface mesh. And then I will build uh, the discretization of the single layer potential. You remember, I said that we, I will use the single layer potential to uh, reconstruct my solution U. So this basically is a rectangular matrix now, discretizing the single layer potential. And uh, if I do a matrix vector product uh, with P, I will end up with uh, computing my solution on uh, all the at all the vertices of the mesh uh, of the output mesh here because I put P one, so I reconstruct the solution on all the vertices of my uh, output mesh, and then I can just plot. This. And this also uh, is an edge matrix, right? Because I, I it is a BEM kernel. I see there is a green kernel here, so I can make use of compression techniques to compress this rectangular matrix. Okay, and so this is just an illustration of a, a solution with the H shape cavity. So we have an in, incoming wave, plane wave uh, from the left, and we can solve the problem uh, and reconstruct the solution on the square three here, which is a, a cut, right, a slice through the three space. And uh, basically, interesting thing here, as you see, we have actually 45% compression on the matrix. So we actually only uh, compute approximately 5% of the coefficients of the whole matrix. Okay. And I guess now I give the floor to Jacques to talk about 
uh, how to use Maxwell, uh, how to solve a Maxwell problem. And then uh, he also will talk about uh, composite uh, finite element spaces for couple problems. And I will come back at the end for the final year. Thank you. Um, I will speak about now on the Maxwell question. Okay, I will enter in the diamonic Maxwell equation where omega is the underlying momentum. Um, I consider um, only on the term when I consider I consider that the only the um, I consider only on the scatter on the external problem on the, the circle of the domain gamma. I consider an incident uh, an incident uh, electromagnetic wave uh, uh, E inch yeah, here. And um, I see that you, for the Maxwell equation, you are here. The first equation is the equation of rotation E for the electromagnetic H equal to the magnetic field. Here, uh, the third equation is the uh, is a Goudaric uh, transition of that the Goudaric gamma, what is the fact that they consider a uh, perfect exit on the curve? And here is the radiation condition as the infinite uh, forces talk for the uh, next equation to take the Goudaric element method. You need to introduce. Um, so the the electric electric the equation you need to use the total magnetic stress uh, with the G is defined only on gamma, where H is correspond to a scatter or magnetic field is the question of that is the question and plus the scatter uh, no, the incoming uh, magnetic field with uh, and uh, for the, um, then, uh, as you tend to, then you use the time formation in the which is an expression in the negative. Uh, U0 is the uh, epsilon is the permittivity, and U0 is the uh, permittivity. And we consider only here uh, the fact that you consider the layer outside the domain image. Okay, so that's the Maxwell equation. When you uh, the to can show that the total magnetic G can be the term of the uh, common name is the equation with here. You have uh, G, the kernel, that green uh, kernel, that produces the dependent kappa, which is produced by the by Henry. And here we have the divergence of this, uh, the surface. Is uh, here on dependencies and V is a is a test function, V is a Hamilton function. And you also need to have to take account of the boundary condition that uh, in single wave, electromagnetic in single wave is here. Um, with a uh, with a uh, when you solve these equations, you want to solve these equations on G. That you can uh, reobtain the many the scatter field uh, using the special field formula is given here. And uh, this special field formula is also um, implemented in the mm. so. Et tu... Ah oui, ça va pas. Non. Chaud. En fait, si tu as du mal à swiper, ah, tu peux faire. Euh... Ah, ouais, d'accord. Ok. okay. Non, c'est oh, bon. Je pas. Non, c'est pas. C'est option. Alors, attends, c'est contrôle. Ouais. Ah, c'est contrôle. Tu fais contrôle. Okay. D'accord, ok. Merci. Merci. I just want to show you a simple example um, which is in the distribution. Yes. Oh, 
C'est bien là ou un peu plus Un peu plus. Là, c'est mieux. Les amis, ils ont dit qu'ils 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 ont dit qu'ils
Yes, in the right of the chapter, we can use the Jews in Quran and say that the Krishna is Jesus. And you have the scatter, uh, infinite, uh, infinite scatter. And with that, you can cut, for example, the, the molecule of the part of the rare, rare, very economic. Before that, you have the economic, um, economic, economic. Uh, Watch. Watch. Okay. Watch. 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 Uh, how to implement in the uh, case in uh, the distributions. I will give you some results, but uh, the cavity cobra, I use, uh, I have infinity, uh, coming, uh, coming in this direction. I use a frequency of uh, three years. I use uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 kilo the number of dots or other format. I use a fake uh, material for the quality. Uh, for this test case, I need to, to do uh, the thickness of uh, the cavity, uh, cobra cavity. Also, uh, and I use uh, lithium APS process. You can see that the time of assembly is very important. It's not uh, important. And uh, you can have a solution with. Uh, as I use uh, in uh, the Jacobi frequency, uh, the number of iterations is very big. And you see that uh, compared to the case that show direct remotes for the Cobra cavity, the compression is just, uh, is just important. You have 80 40% of compression. I think it's just the Jacobi frequency, it's just a diagonal frequency. And there is a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I will turn yeah, back. Just a remark. This will be available in uh, two months, one or two months. Okay. You can uh, download uh, from uh, the web. In the web Yeah, it's still uh, early work in progress. Early work in progress. We need to have some tests um, to, to put that in the quality um, book. So I need to speak about how to define the uh, data space in Python. First of all, you need to have a finite element, <laughs> one to two, or the other one, or the other element. And you need to have a different meshes. A meshes. Uh, you can define aussi vector data space. That you have a new input, you have much, and you can add uh, for each uh, component of uh, your vector a different kind of finite element. But this, this FA space is defined on one mesh. And for example, if you want to use periodic binary conditions in the vector FA space, uh, you have a periodic for all components. So the so idea is to remove uh, this. To add the uh, complete data space in the sense that you want to have to define the new data space as a Cartesian produce of different data space that can be uh, defined by the previous uh, by the previous method, and you can have, for example, different meshes uh, into the into different meshes and can be uh, different type of meshes, and you want to have. Um, 
For example, if I want to, in this case, I can't do uh, to have a one target, uh, to have a target in one direction. If, for example, you can define for those who have three different extra space, I define, for example, periodicity in uh, one of them. And with that, uh, with this framework, with the uh, angle bracket with here, I can uh, I define a finite uh, quantum data space with a really in, uh, memory correspond to that. In the Cartesian produce of the different data space. Uh, there are the in the first example, I do a negative in some of the issues, for instance, for ten then to think. You have a uh, part to define uh, the volume information, for example, in the two dimension, other parts to define uh, the curvature mesh with only a uh, mesh. So, is it from uh, this formula you can define only this type of uh, FS space with the uh, angular matrix? Uh, Uh, I will speak about the clue of defining programs in Python. Uh, if I define different FA space and use uh, the different uh, FA solution, we are defined a very different uh, right? U1 is different of this one, and U2 is, and I suppose that is a more general case with uh, the of the mesh is different. And I want to use a problem, KSK work to define my variation response. There are some limitations. All the spaces will be defined on the same meshes. And uh, you have uh, to be uh, the text function corresponding uh, to U1 and uh, the run function corresponding to one and the uh, text function, uh, text function, uh, text uh, space will be uh, to be to be to be, one, to be, need to be the same. And respectively for the E2 and E2. But since the same is the sense of computer memory. The idea of the composite phase space is to bypass uh, those limitations. Uh, I will be, uh, I don't uh, speak, uh, but normally in free time, you can bypass this limitation by duty the, the, the table variable, and you can do. Uh, for example, if you h one and h one, for example, and the difference you h one and you h one in terms of space, you can do that. But in this case, you need to define to have a variable that's allowed to parameter to compute the matrices. But the global matrix of your system will be uh, will be uh, um, will be Defined as the sum of different uh, block matrices will be defined for each block, a variation of one corresponds to your system. So the idea of the of the okay, complete space space is to write one variation form for this case. Also, uh, new, so new formulations with complete FA space. For example, I do a present a vectorial setup for UH and uh, the scalar on FA space for PH. I define uh, my two variation uh, function in one, U1, U2, and U1, U2 for the unconnected function for, uh, and the take function for the UH space. And P, G, and Q for this sort of. Uh, with some similarity to the notation to the top program. And P is the pressure, and the pressure and Q is the text function relative to the pressure. To take a difference between the previous uh, method to, uh, to define the program, we use Angular brackets, Angular brackets to say that you use composite FS space. And uh, to define, for example, here is a uh, I turn from internal FA space and FA space and the text function. What you do is to define also 
is the bigger tool to define the effect function corresponding to the first effect space to correspond to the new here. And the P B2 uh, P corresponds to PX and you use uh, to define the different function with a uh, rectangular square bracket. And with that, you can, after uh, when you use the main composite problem, you can compose it and you make composite problem. You can plot the solution uh, U1 and U2 are contained, uh, contain the solution of the problem you have solved uh, with this um, instruction. Now, this gives uh, with a uh, rectangle uh, uh, composite effect space. Allow for different machine and even different mesh type for mesh, mesh, and mesh, uh, mesh, and mesh. And uh, for the moment, in the you, you, take, you, you have some um, you have some answers in the code to take that you you have one, you get you have one. So for the moment, the two I think it will be um, removed in after. That's crazy. Uh, we take uh, give us the first example that you have introduced before by uh, by Frederick. I just want to get two materials, omega one and omega two. I suppose that they have gamma as a contact with the two solids, with the two very between the two domains. I suppose the thermal problem is the KU and the conductivity of of the uh, domain organic and uh, I impose in this surface uh, uh, this uh, boundary uh, a constant temperature and for the, for the path I use a constant temperature of the integration and uh, on the top I use um, uh, the upper and, upper and lower boundary I use the gradient, uh, I use the gradient of the temperature. For the contact between the two solid domains, and again, when you may have I use the quantity of that. And the two will be uh, different of flux for zero. And I suppose that the thermal flux with a given by a uh, by constant, it's a by constant, it is uh, this and it's supplied by the, the, the jump of the, of the temperature in the, in the surface of the curve gamma contact. And uh, with its hypothesis, you can write the formulation found in this, uh, in the, in this formulation. We, here you are present uh, the jump of gamma uh, two with correlation to boundary conditions of gamma contact we use for the first equation of uh, e omega for e omega one and here I use for e omega two. Mm -hmm. um, here I define a new uh, FS space. I use P1 for the first domain, P1. Uh, Corresponds with the mesh for the omega one uh, domain. I define the effect function here. And after I use uh, I need to define, I define the my variation of terms with uh, I use the composite uh, FS space, I use on your brackets in the program. And uh, after I, I solve the computer thermic, I will give you uh, now the, I will run the code. Yeah. I will show you the code. Wait. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? This is um, what? Yeah. 
Ouais. Ouais. Ouais, je peux peut-être prendre ça après, plus tard. Um, first of all, I will show you the, I give you a, in the previous version of the problem, uh, if you want to solve this problem as you have uh, two domains, uh, two uh, meshes, the omega th1 uh, of the domain, omega1 and omega2, you need to take, you need to define the variational form, you need to use a variable, And you find the for each bug the matrix to obtain the global matrices of uh, your system. And you will see that you have um, 10 line of spots. Yeah. And now with the uh, with the composite uh, form, you have only uh, you need to use that, but you have uh, five line of spots. And you get uh, you have the same of it. Um, but also, I put that. On, I will do that. Um, I think that uh, I present the case of problem, but also for the rest, when you want to use a composite FS space, we have uh, defined a composite FS space with the showing this one, the H1 and the H2. You can also define easily the your variation form. Mm. And in the for, for example, for the variation form, you not on the your brackets. Is a is a is a even like with the classical way. You need only uh, for example, the only different. The one you bash on the And after I saw this, I'm going to back. You I need to whip and I should run the code. Oh, j'ai plus de temps. Non, je le sais, je le sais, il est là. Allez, hop, tant pis. Voilà. Here, I show, I show you, and is, uh, you have the first domain with uh, Omega 1 and with Omega X2 here. You have uh, IC, in the case, I use confirming meshes between the two domains. And um, Here, the, in this case, you can show, you can have an analytic approximation. So here is the solution you obtain with the previous method. And, uh, yeah. And here is the solution we have the, the problem or the problem uh, keywords. So you can see the words that you have the same. And here, I, I show you the difference between, uh, and you show that, uh, I point that the, there are the slope between the two methods with composite FSS and the variation form used with block C's. But you, the most, you, in this case, I put some, um, some uh, confirmed meshes, but with uh, with the uh, composite FS space, for example, I can remove and I have, uh, for example, here is I can adapt the mesh to have different meshes between the two domains. And uh, when you see the, um, and I need to change only two lines and uh, I mean, you see that you have this part of the domain is more refined uh, more refined here than here. And in the boundary of the contact, we have different, uh, we have no confirm between the two domains. And uh, we see the final for the prayer for the error. And you see the error is the form is small. 
So uh, you can have some uh, for this first uh, example. So for example, if you want to solve this problem with uh, you know if you uh, if you have uh, two different domains, is you can perhaps perhaps with uh, all the problem table with no composite, or if you have penalization of uh, you extend the solution of the uh, one with the only equivalent with penalization, you can perhaps uh, as this problem, but you can show or for example, a request a component a lot to use non conformal machine for omega one and beta two. The only relation between the omega is due to the complete uh, interface problems. Due to this fact, um, you can suppose that you can use a FS space composite of it to have different kind of units in the different domain omega one and beta two. And I wish uh, you also for the right, we go to the point three and the point two is, is correct with composite FS space. Uh, I think I use uh, script this. Well, Uh, when you uh, perhaps I script this, perhaps I will speak about uh, another point I took up before. Since uh, I want to, I have a Stokes example and the Stokes problem. I, uh, I suppose I can use the solution. It is you, the pressure is that, and the right hand side uh, is given by this equation. And this uh, example is only to show that. Um, you can use so you can use to define as uh, I will show you before that you can I need to define the to create the FS space so that you can define the FS space with carry to one direction and uh, can define uh, include in the other direction and uh, what you want to do. It can be non parallel And you can show that if uh, I run the code that I do have, uh, perhaps I knew have the time, uh, you have the same, uh, you obtain the solutions. Uh, Uh, when we speak about uh, for, uh, about uh, some with the right, with the right you can about uh, fan coping, I use I consider and uh, I consider a uh, uh, domain omega with uh, with the interior with uh, and I got uh, uh, MOT equation with. Uh, with the non constant option between uh, behind uh, U. And here, I, I suppose that so I use, um, and I will the side of the domain omega entire dot uh, MOC equation with a constant uh, option. And uh, for the boundary condition, the domain gamma with the between the omega U and omega omega exterior, I suppose that the price of the new man uh, is uh, equal, and uh, you have uh, the trace of the GIK is uh, equal. And also, I use a radiation condition uh, for the take account of the effect of the, of the infinite domain. Uh, the variation for is omega is uh, given by that. As you have um, here, you have the term with the guidance, uh, with the guidance, the right guidance of the V of P. You want to incorporate the the, the effect of the gamma uh, omega external moment, you want to put that uh, to take this equation to put ux here. And uh, is done here, but as uh, Pierre had told you before, which is uh, for the external problems, you want to use uh, BEM methods, and for example, you to the uh, Inside that so use uh, UX and why it is with uh, is obtaining with uh, singular uh, 
layer uh, equation uh, and uh, with that you can give uh, you can, you can give a trace of the game uh, directly along the boundary you have this equation and uh, you have a more important thing is to understand what is the meaning of these terms so you use a uh, you have or you can express that with the number class uh, with a single layer uh, with a single layer Convention and finally, you obtain this system. Uh, no, you have this, this equation. The, this, the first equation of this state corresponds to this, this this term. And the, the following term, you want to, to do that in the in the in. In a week, we use a weak form to impose uh, the quantity uh, the the DIK trace operator conditions. It is Second, I, I'm on the last, last equation. Yes. This is a uh, concerning about that condition. Yes. This is the delivery boundary condition. So that's the function which comes to the boundary. So it's H half, you know, H half, right? You know, H half. And the data is completed. Uh, uh, okay, of the age, the age, uh, so the, I, I, I just the last line. Yes, I stand. Uh, the last line. Yeah, the 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 Mathematics is right, but uh, is a special way to write by the. No, 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 you can you can see what you can see what on the bottom line. That is uh, still still under the else scale. Um, if I understand, you do that with binary elements. So yes, the this is the so, so, so the binary element approximation. It's not finite element, so besides the entries, so it's not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so so you have your two yes. matrices. Yes. You you have all the main tools uh, approximation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and here you have uh, the Ben approximation in, uh, yes. in the formulation. Um, yes. Uh, before uh, we produce the composite FS space, uh, so you have the nothing separation tree, you need to assemble the block separately. So it's uh, done in the third version of uh, this, uh, this problem in uh, in which is in this solution. And uh, with uh, composite FS space, you can write any variation which corresponds with all, all the blocks. The same blocks correspond to these two terms. The mass term here is correspond to this one. And this is um, this correspond to this term uh, correspond to this one. To the sample we are related to Ben kernels with the two related to Ben method. And you have um, you have you to you have you know that the, this term can be expressed with the transpose linear operator with with kappa uh, with kappa linear. With kappa linear. So it's for that um, you have this term correspond to the to this two. These two terms correspond to the trace of the same uh, trace of the single layer. Yeah. 
and use CDI because it returns to because it will attend the to the front transfer to the real variable. Uh, for example, uh, here is a, for example, you have some different kind of indices for the lenses uh, for inside the. Uh, <coughs> for example, this is a wave plane coming in in this direction, and you see the current effects uh, depends on the indices of the lenses you are here. Mm -hmm. Alors, euh, ouais. Alors, for example, the matrix system, uh, we find the matrix system uh, set to slide. And you have, uh, it can be right in this from our solution, it can be written as an event. And uh, if you use a variation form with composite FSS, you, you have uh, the codes. I see you uh, need to solve uh, the question that I am by, by inverse uh, solutions. But it is very low compared to if I open this file, you have a 30, uh, 35, uh, 35 uh, common lines for the definition of the right answer because I need to find or write for each block. I need to take uh, this. And uh, well, uh, here I uh, need to add uh, for the previous plot, I need to add the solution with uh, I minus one with uh, and I get the solution. Uh, for the moment, for a composite FS space, you can't define a FS, uh, FS, uh, FS function from composite FS space, you have compared or all. But you can, between these two methods, you can try the solution. This one is uh, more tricky because you need to know the, the different uh, number of dots uh, for each uh, component of your FS space. But uh, with the method with Fabricity uh, implemented by uh, super type Frederick, you can dispatch a solution which is to define only your, your FS space if you claim and you claim it depends on your, well, your claim FS space or claim FS space. And with that, you have the, your solution. You take, you can uh, take your solution, you can take the same part and the same part. And uh, with that, you can uh, compute your solutions. Um, I can show the Well, perhaps. Perhaps it's a little bit. I think I know how to solve this problem. Yes. So, yeah, just to finish this part of the talk, I just show you the, uh, the code running for this lenses example. Okay. Um, wait. We put all the examples on the web. If you are a why can't I? Uh... Okay, so if I run the lens example, so it uses BEM, which uses H tool, which uses MPI. So you need to run in parallel. I mean, you need to run the parallel version of FM even on one core with FM plus plus MPI. Let me enlarge this. And so I guess the example is this one. Okay, so the idea is <clears throat> to show the bending of a, of an incoming wave by an arrangement of lenses. <clears throat> and so this is a finite element mesh, and basically each lens has this uh, non-constant gradient index uh, coefficient in the Elmer's equation. And so this is a FEM solution. Uh, this is a BEM and that's living on gamma. Uh, which we can actually use to reconstruct the solution in the ex everywhere else in the exterior like this. And so you see here the two couple problem and you see the, the wave bending by the arrangement of lenses. So this is a, the FEMBEM coupled problem in 2D. Uh, okay, and so now the last part of the talk. 
is uh, what about what about uh, what we are working on uh, about uh, parallel system. So I put uh, the ultimate goal here, which is uh, more like a pipe dream, <laughs> which is that uh, the idea is you take any sequential script you, you already wrote in Python, you run it in parallel without changing anything and any processes. You want to have the same result with fully different data structure, hopefully with a speed up of n. This is sort of a pipe dream that probably we never achieve, but we start smaller. And so what we are working on right now is uh, focusing on the assembly and, and the solution steps, which is which are usually the main bottlenecks of your simulation. And we try to ease the parallelization of those two steps as much as possible. And uh, also uh, with what uh, Jacques presented about uh, composite finite element spaces, we can also uh, we also need to generalize the way we see an, uh, a discrete operator in free time because, for example, for this FEMBEM formulation, you have uh, you have sparse matrices for the FEM part, you have BEM hierarchical matrices for the BEM part. And so how to manipulate this uh, composite uh, operator, uh, we try to generalize the, the matrix format, which uh, in the same way of PETI, if you know, uh, have, has a PETI has a nested matrix format, which, uh, which is basically a block format, where each, mat each block is a matrix of any type, really. And so we try to use that also to ease the solution of couple problems uh, such as the FMBM problem uh, we showed you just before. Okay, uh, so the first step is uh, we can uh, hide the parallel assembly when you use, uh, for example, solve or problem in your script. Uh, basically, if you run your script in parallel using FFMPI run minus NP4, for example, if you want to use four cores with your laptop, uh, basically you just Need to load the distributed solver bumps and add the solver equals part solver master equals minus one, which tells Python that we are building the matrix uh, in the distributed way. And so, if you do that, you don't need to change anything in your version of formulation. We automatically will uh, distribute and parallelize the assembly of the matrix in a distributed way on the cores and then give it in the distributed format to bumps in order to use. Uh, to, to solve the linear system with the with MEMS, which, which is a parallel solver use, using MPI. And you can do the same with the varational keyword. If you prefer the matrix and uh, right hand side the formulation, uh, basically, exactly the same. You once again uh, use the master equals minus one here with a load MEMS. And uh, this will be then your matrix A behind the scenes will be distributed, distributed. The right hand side will be distributed also. Uh, but then when you solve the linear system, we actually, uh, uh, every, every MPI process will have the full solution U at the end of this uh, instruction. And so you can continue on with your, your script. Uh, okay, and so basically uh, what I just uh, told you also works with composite uh, finite element spaces for a couple of problems. So for example, for the lens, uh, FEMBEM uh, lens example we just showed you, uh, you can do the same, so load MEMS and tell uh, that the matrix is distributed and solve the linear system. But if you, do, if you do that for now, since we use MEMS, for now we just uh, actually uh, densify the H matrices, right? Because this is uh, what the matrix looks like for, for the coupled problem. So you have the, the huge FEM part here, the, the sparse matrix for the FEM uh, part, which is a small. Dense BEM matrix here, uh, which is basically a densified uh, hierarchical matrix for the BEM block. Here you have the off diagonal uh, mass term here. And here you have the composable layer BEM operator uh, here, which is the other off diagonal term. And so this is, this is not optimal to do that, to densify then uh, give it to months. And so we can also use PETC instead. Uh, very easy to change uh, two lines, I think, here. We use PETC and uh, basically give PETC uh, behind the scenes, give PETC uh, the four matrix blocks uh, where two of them will stay as H matrices. Actually, it will be PETC that will uh, build the H matrices because H2 is also interfaced within PETC. And so then you can use, uh, this is where it may, might be a little more complicated, but clear with 
enlighten you probably uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Then you can make use of the wide range of available PASI solvers, uh, uh, solvers in PASI to uh, define your custom preconditioner to solve the linear system, uh, hopefully as efficiently as possible. So, so this is the part where uh, you have to know a little bit of PETC if you want to lose PETC uh, to this its full potential, right? And so, for example, here, okay, uh, do I have the time? So at the end, I will tell this, but I will start with some things more uh, easier. Uh, okay, so now I will actually show you on the examples actually uh, Jacques showed uh, just before to keep it simple. Okay. So, so for example, let's take, uh, I think you didn't show this one. So the, the okay, the driven cavity for stocks, this is, this is another stocks example, uh, which uses uh, the composite finite element spaces that uh, Jacques showed. And so basically here, where is it? Yeah, so you have a UH, which is, oh, you put P2, P2, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you have the velocity components and you have the pressure components and you can actually use different meshes for, for velocity and pressure now. Uh, we define the composite FS space with the two the UH and PH and then we can define the stock that's a problem and <clears throat> use it uh, and solve it uh, in this uh, co composite way. So if I run this, if I'm... Uh, okay. Okay. So this is, uh, and at the end, you have this, some streamlines. But this is uh, the sequential code, basically. And so if I do what I just showed, uh, I can just do, I can just load, actually, I can load mums here. So I can just load mums. Uh, I think the little tricky part is I also need to load them for, for some reason for now, but uh, this will disappear. And then I can, okay, still here, okay, master equal minus one. And I can now run this code in parallel and it will actually parallelize. Uh, for now, this is uh, the default way. So I don't need to do anything. We will see at the end how to, to tell the user uh, and to give the user the choice of uh, what he wants to do. But this is a default way that it's also parallelizes the, the assembly of the right and of the linear forms. So now if I use FF and run on the four cores, for example, of my laptop. Okay. okay. So yeah, this solution, probably a little bit faster, but this is still a 2D, it's a simple problem. So I'm, I'm not sh showing you any computing time, but uh, uh, but uh, this this works with a parallel assembly. And then we give it in parallel, in the distributed way, we give the matrix to MEMS and solves it in parallel using the four core. Okay, and so now I told you, uh, what if I want to use PET-C? So instead of MEMS, I do, okay. Uh, oh yes, and actually I can do the same here. Because here for the streamlines, you actually solve a problem. So I can actually, or I can actually do that. And this would also parallelize this problem. Okay. Uh, but now let's say I want to use PETC for this problem. So I load PETC. Okay. And now instead of matrix here, I, I am building a PETC mat. So I just re replace matrix by mat. And uh, we don't need that. And now I can specify any PETC solver I want on A. So set A. So this is a syntax to give some PETC uh, flags to PETC to, uh, on how you want to solve your problem. So very simple, simplest way is to use actually uh, LU solver. So I'm just doing this. And this will use PETI and use LU to compute uh, LU factorization of the matrix. Okay, same solution. Uh, PETC, yeah, PETC, system solved with PETC in 0.15 seconds. Okay. Uh, and so now, if I, let's say, I want to do a fancier preconditioning. So 
That's the part where I'm not a specialist of stocks. I'm not a specialist of pet, of pet C preconditioners. But let's say I want to use a short complement type preconditioner um, and using so the field split uh, framework of pet C. So now I'm telling pet C I want to use field split, but which basically if you have different physics and different equations for the different variables of your coupled problem, you can use a field speed preconditioner in PETC to do different things for the different variables. So here I can uh, I can say I want a short complement type preconditioner. So Pierre, if I do a mistake, you <laughs> tell me. Uh, I think PC, uh, PC field speed uh, type short, right? Uh, okay, and now, so with this, I can actually do true incompressible stocks, right? So I can actually remove this term, this small term for the pressure. I can, I can actually have zero block pressure, right? With this preconditioner. So I can remove this. I can tell Petsy that I'm actually solving a saddle prone problem, right? So PC feed split can detect saddle point, right? And then uh, I can uh, specify a solver I want for the velocity components, right? So uh, the cool thing here is that since we actually build it this way, this uh, we actually separate the fields. So uh, by default, I can refer to the two fields of my problem. So the first field is velocity field, it's zero. So if it's split zero, and here I, I can specify which preconditioner I want for this for the velocity, so I guess LU. Okay. And then uh, I guess I can see what's happen what's happening. Hopefully this works, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, it works. Okay. So you see three iterations for this, uh, the short complement type preconditioner. So it's slower, but okay. This is a very small problem, so it will be, but okay, so you see, you can uh, now with this formulation, you can then automatically use field split preconditioners with uh, the field splits naturally defined by your composite finite element space, which splits the, your problem into coupled variables, right? Uh, okay. And uh, now, now what? Okay. And so now for the lenses, for example, just to finish, okay. Uh, I have minus three minutes, right? Okay, so <laughs> let's do quickly. Uh, so for Elmol, for the lens, lenses problem, uh, I can actually also do it in parallel uh, naturally. Where is the problem? Here. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, you solve it two times, right? So let's focus on the second time. So this is, uh, oh, it's already here. Okay, so. This is a way to use MEMS in a distributed way. Oh, to, <coughs> to solve the problem in a distributed way, right? But this is the problem, the part where I told you, okay, but this densifies the H matrix, H matrix block, so it's not optimal, but I nonetheless, I can do it. Uh, so, so if I run this using four cores, yeah, sure. Okay, a little bit faster than before. Hopefully, yes. Ah, yes, but we, we solved it two times, so it's not. It's actually not that much faster. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So it works, and now I can use PetC also if I want. So once again, uh, let's load, uh, load PetC. So this is a complex problem, so I need to load the complex version of PetC. Here, instead of matrix, I write mat, and that's it. And now I can just, okay, I can just uh, once again do things. Okay, here I, I will cheat a little bit because the <laughs> a good preconditioner uh, is like this. So, but I can very quickly explain this, uh, the, the lines. Uh, but hopefully I can, uh, I should be able to. Okay, that's the thing. Oh. Huh. 
Mal sieht das machen. So, das ist das Ja. 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 Merci. Ok. Euh, ok. Hop. Non, il est Let me fix it. I think it's fine. We'll see. Uh, so basically, what am I doing here? So I'm using a flexi GMIs for the whole uh, coupled problem. And basically, I'm using field split once again. And for the first, for the FEM block, I'm using additive Schwartz. Okay, the additive Schwartz method. So this is sort of de domain decomposition preconditioner. Uh, and using in the subdomains of the additive Schwartz method, I'm using LU. Uh, I'm using GMRS for the GMRS for the first block. And for the BEM block, since we yet we don't have an HLU, a Yarschkel LU solver, we just do basically 20 iterations of GMRS for the, for the BEM block, right? And so, okay. So if I run again, should work. Okay, this is the first all, okay. Okay, and so you see this is a petty output. <coughs> it converges in, in uh, 121 iterations. Uh, okay. So I think I'll stop here for the live demo. But uh, okay, yeah, as you can see, the goal is to yeah, to ease the use of parallel solvers, and uh, uh, and obviously we cannot do everything we 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 do in the current formalism, which probably will be presented by Pierre uh, this afternoon, or at least in the tutorial advanced tutorial uh, part. But uh, we can still do uh, pretty cool things, I think, even with this working uh, work in progress version. And so to conclude, uh, yeah, what we are working on now, probably we want to actually uh, actually directly if you are you uh, if you are uh, in the habit of using solve or keyboard problem uh, solve or problem, maybe we want to define. New type of solver, which is directly solver equals free tree, and then you can do pet C like directly. So it will work on a lot of solvers, but uh, some uh, more complex solvers or non algebraic, non fully algebraic solvers, we need to do a little more work. So we are also working on hiding the, the implementation of uh, domain decryption methods, which are which is currently uh, written with macros, for example, in macros.dm.adp. And we, we work on rewrite, rewriting this in the kernel to hide the domain decryption difficulties and probably hopefully one day use the dissolvers as easily as doing this. And, yeah. uh, and we will be able to use uh, uh, DD solvers such as Zinio. Uh, almost transparently uh, uh, pretty soon, I think, because uh, the solver doesn't need additional input for the, from the user. So we have all the information we already need for with the, the one for, uh, functional formulation that the user needs. And uh, yeah, to conclude, we are uh, also working on uh, implementing more things in H tool. So the HLU factorization now we. Yeah truly starting working on it finally. So hopefully next year it will be available for the next step and date. And uh, also more compression techniques such as randomized SVD, which might uh, might work a little more, a little better than standard ACF or uh, different kernels. And now with this, I will uh, stop uh, here. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.
In the composite uh, framework, it's contiguous for each of the components of your composite finite element space, which is different with, than the standard way where the, the, the degrees of freedom are interleaved, right? Between the data, it's not hidden by using that. Yes, you But you you like the sense zero zero double bond flow plus something comma double bond in a different way as we have to define it. So I think you mean this. Uh, where is it? Zero for on the photo on it. This is this. This is when the index is. You mean this? Yeah, that, that's why yeah. it's uh, truly for for. Yeah, this is truly like this with complete. Let's do it. The common in both ways. Right. I, but but for the same right? But first one is only for the open finite, not the regular finite. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, both are only for composite. This doesn't work for uh, standard. This doesn't work for standard. Yeah. But for standard, the, the degrees of freedom are ah. interleaved. From both, yeah. so if you take uh, P two, P two finite, P one, P one finite element, you have the degree of the, the uh, numbering of the degree of freedom are. Zero for uh, first finite element, one for second finite element, etc. etc. So, so it's other than heaven. This one you want finite with composite. Or uh, with composite is you have all the degree of freedom of finite element one and after all the degree of freedom of uh, finite element two. Okay, so, so it's yes. uh, a huge difference uh, at level of matrices. Yeah. The second one is uh, an example of the uh, heat equation. Yeah. Uh, one thing with two domains, you can see interesting. It works for 3D. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, we showed 2D for uh, presentation for purposes, but everything is. Yeah. 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 If we use the different meshes on the right hand side, left hand side, yes. for 3D, the interface is uh, much more complicated. Okay, yeah, so then it's a matter of because under the hood for now we are using standard interpolation, right? They don't necessarily need to be conformal, but they need to somehow. I don't know how to express the different interface because the interface is left side or right side, but it's not the same. But uh, I mean, so so in the integration, of the, uh, you you want to do two integration for domain one or domain two. Yes, you need to make a choice. Domain one and domain two is not the same integration. Yes, yeah. for, for this. But what they would be both the same same integration? Yeah, uh, to be careful uh, on which you, you, on which mesh you integrate on the side. You you can do very strange thing. You uh, when you write that. Me, uh, I just add uh, parentheses V1 minus V2 here. You can do that. And you can, you, you can uh, when you write a formulation, if you don't have, a, if it's the same edge, no, no problem. But if you have two different match, you can say half of that plus half of that. You, you can, You can, when you understand what FreePem do, after you can play. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. That's what we have to remind. So this, this part defines the quadrature formula. And here you have uh, the variational form. Yeah. So here means for all quadrature points of this quadrature formula, Compute this. 
This is uh, the strong meaning of what yeah, is the uh, last of all. Yeah. 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 It's uh, some an element, uh, some of quadrature point. And this is defined by this object. And when you do morta, it's important. I try without morta equal one. Uh, it doesn't work. It's, uh, uh, I see what they do in the code. Uh, I do that uh, maybe 50, years ago, and I don't remember, but it's really important keyword. If you don't uh, adapt, uh, the computation are wrong, because this say, if the point are not uh, inside the domain, they remove the point. Remember that if you have continuous function in PFM, the function are not zero outside the domain. It's just uh, following it by continuity to, so you have sometimes strong things, strong things, sorry. Yeah. So I think uh, it's time to, to try to go to it. Uh, on GC and people dans la salle de réunion. And uh, you, I need some uh, hand to, to take the decision. And uh, we can start at uh, maybe uh, half past one. Okay. And Pierre, c'est toi qui nous sera responsable du numéro. Uh, okay. So, thanks for all. See you tout à l'heure, comme on dit.